So I've had the ZR for a couple weeks. And something that nobody's really talking about, the ISO works very different on this camera than it does on the Z6 III. And I think it's one of the like shining features of R3D that nobody's really talking about. So before we talk about the way it handles it differently than the Z6 III, I kind of want to go over how ISO works in RAW. And we're gonna we're gonna look at we're gonna look at something from this. This is the American Cinematographer Manual, so you know I'm not just pulling this out of my butt, okay? And so you guys will see how R3D works much better and more convenient with the exposure process than the way the Z6 III does it. Nikon released these charts. So what these charts are really showing is the where your dynamic range is sitting uh, in regards to middle gray and what happens to that when you change your ISO. So 800 and 6400 are going to give you the kind of the I guess the sweet spot puts middle gray right in the middle of your dynamic range. Well, then as you go up to 1600 or 3200 ISO, you'll see that that middle gray point stays the same. Your dynamic range starts to shift upwards. And then as you lower it down to 400, 200, you see the exact opposite. It starts to move down to the shadows. So practically, what does this mean? Like, what does this mean with what we're doing? The ISO is just metadata anyway. Why does it matter? what we set this to. Let's say you take three shots and middle gray is the same exposure on each. One of them is shot at 3200 ISO, one of them is shot at 800 ISO, one of them is 200 ISO. So if you take each of these shots and you make middle gray the same in each shot, then what's gonna happen is if you're at 3200 ISO, you're gonna have to close down your aperture or add ND. Uh, I would lean on the side of adding ND. It gives you more creative control. So when you add more ND, you're blocking more light from getting into the sensor, thereby lowering your highlights and also lowering your shadows. So when the shadows get too low, they start to, you know, you start to lose detail in them. When you're shooting at a higher ISO and you expose for middle gray, then less light will be hitting your sensor than if you're shooting at a lower ISO and you also expose for middle gray. The same thing works in reverse. You expose middle gray at 200 ISO, then you're gonna have to open your aperture or remove ND a lot more. Uh, so this means more light is going to be hitting your sensor, which means you're going to have more detail in your shadows. So that's why the dynamic range shifts there. And it does this at both of the native ISOs as well. Uh, it just gives you a different starting point. So for lower light scenarios, you can switch to that high base ISO, and then it works the exact same way on that gain circuit. So you can 100% shoot everything at 800 and 6400 ISO, because those are the natives. You'll probably get really good results the majority of the time. But you should know how all this works when you're on set and you need to make decisions. So you're shooting a low light scene, maybe consider dropping the ISO to 400 or 200. Shooting outside in the bright highlights and you don't have that many shadows, maybe consider bumping it up to 1600 or even 3200 and NDing down to kind of protect and preserve some of those highlights. So how is this different than it works on the Z6 III or an NRAW? The big difference is in that little setting up there that says low and high for your base ISO. In NRAW and on the Z6 III, we don't get to choose which gain circuit we're using. It automatically switches when we get up to 6400, which is the second native. If we go back down to 5000, then we go back down into that first gain circuit and we get really bad noise. If you know the Z63, you know that 5000 ISO is like notoriously awful. So R3D is giving us the freedom to choose that high gain circuit and then we can lower it down to 5000 ISO and avoid the nasty like upper end of that first gain circuit. So that means when you're on your second gain circuit, it's harder to expose for the shadows, which is kind of a big deal because you're generally going to be shooting really low light scenarios on that second native circuit. So if you can bump it up to that second native circuit, but drop it back down to 3200 ISO, then you're going to be in a much better position in your low lights, you're gonna have a lot more detail in your low lights if you're able to drop that back. So all of this is when you're exposing relating to middle gray, because obviously the ISO in raw, it's all metadata. So you're gonna be able to change your ISO in post, but you won't be able to change your exposure in post, your, the actual amount of light that's hitting your sensor in post. Knowing how to manipulate your ISO to give you a better preview of what you're shooting is going to be super helpful when you're on set making decisions and you need to decide whether you need more detail in the shadows or more detail in the highlights. So essentially, I guess what I'm saying is ISO is kind of like a preview that helps you expose to your eye and to middle gray more correctly and helps you make creative choices on what details to preserve in your image. And I swear, I'm not just talking out of my butt. American Cinematographer's Manual, these guys know a thing or two, okay? I'm going to read this little section out of the American Cinematographer's Manual and then 
you'll understand. You'll see, oh, okay. On page 51 in the, in the manual, if you have it under exposure strategy, basically the last paragraph on exposure strategy, it said, it might seem to be a contradictory exposure strategy, but if we rate the ISO of a camera higher for very bright scenes, a darker monitor output picture compels us to stop down or to add ND to protect highlights. So that's, if we raise the ISO, then we're gonna be like, oh, this is too bright. Add on the ND, and then we're cutting the light and protecting the highlights, if that makes sense. Continuing on here, it says, similarly, if we rate the ISO of the camera lower for darker scenes, the monitor output compels us to open the stop. In either case, the result is that the exposure lands in the sweet spot of the camera's sensitivity, and the noise floor and highlight clipping are better protected by virtue of the viewing output range. When photographing with raw mode, the raw image data is unaffected. ISO rating is metadata and not baked into the recorded, the recorded raw image. So what that is saying is you should know these charts that I showed you earlier. You should know how they're affecting your image and you should know how you can use that information to help you get the images that you want to help protect the data that you want to protect. So that was a lot of theory. I hope it helped. I hope the images that I shared helped. I hope the charts helped. If, if you want to find those, you can just search like Nikon ZR dynamic range charts and you can find them. I hope that helps you guys when you're, you know, trying to figure out your ISO on this new ZR. I'm loving this thing and there will be plenty more ZR content to come. So make sure you drop a subscription, a like, and let me know in the comments if you think the color red is pretty sick. It's pretty gnarly. Pretty cool little color. <laughs>